Hey guys, what is going on? It is Dylan here coming at you today with a little bit different of a video here on my channel. Uh, trying to think of ideas that I could help build this channel and to grow it a little bit. Um, with it being the off season still kind of right now for me in upstate New York, um, I had this idea. I've seen uh, other YouTubers do this um, with other sporting leagues and uh, just other sports in general. Um, I'm going to be doing a tier list today, um, ranking sprint car drivers um, based on how their seasons have gone so far in 2023 and uh, what we can kind of expect to see from them this season. Um, so like I said, just trying something new here on the channel. Uh, the GoPro content is lacking a little bit because like I said, things haven't gotten into too, uh, full swing up here yet. Uh, so just looking for a way to uh, grow my channel and uh, figure this would be worth a shot. So if you like content like this, let me know. Comment below. Uh, leave your thoughts, opinions. I'm um, going to warn you guys right now. Like I said, this is opinion-based, this entire list. So if you guys want to flame me in the comments, go ahead. Lo would love to discuss it with you, uh, either in the comment section or even at a track this summer. Um, I'm going to be at plenty of tracks this summer, so if you guys uh, see me at a track, feel free to come up to me, say hey, and uh, we can chat for a few minutes. But uh, So <clears throat> without further ado, let's uh, get cracking with the, this list. Um, as you can see on the screen, categories, I have the best of the best, uh, contenders, great drivers, good drivers, a uh, few top tens, guys that could uh, get a sneaky good finish every now and again. Uh, guys like that, uh, bright future, one or two track wonders, solid drivers, and then drivers that are just kind of meh. Um, full disclaimer, I got a bunch of drivers here, so I'm going to kind of go through this pretty quick. I don't want to keep you guys here all day. Uh, I tried to get all of the outlaws. I got all of them on this list. Uh, a lot of the PA Posse big guns uh, got pretty much all of the high limit series drivers, I got the all of the full time out or the full time all star drivers as well. So um, without further ado, let's get cracking. Um, first up on the list, we have Bill Baylog. I'm just going to put Bill Baylog in this category. It seems like Baylog is anywhere from fifth to fifteenth on any given night. He runs um, somewhere in that range, like. Um, I know he's ran full-time with the All-Stars, had a few wins in the past, but generally I'm going to put him in that category because he he's able to pull a few uh, top tens every now and again, but for most of the time he runs generally around mid-pack to, uh, I would say anywhere from like 10th to like 17th range usually. Uh, next up we got Alex Bowman. I'm going to throw him in the bright future category. Uh, really liked what I've seen from Bowman so far in his career. Doesn't have much experience behind the wheel of a sprint car yet. Uh, only in a second full season racing a sprint car. Uh, normally does pretty good qualifying though. So that is one good aspect that uh, Bowman has shown so far in his career. Just needs to work on solidifying and being more consistent throughout the whole night. Um, going quick time is all good. But when you start on the pole and then generally fall back to around like 10th or so, uh, you, you got to learn to kind of um, establish yourself and save your equipment throughout the remainder of the evening. Uh, next up here, we got Cap Henry. I'm going to fit him in the one and two track wonders section. Um, Cap generally, uh, he's, he, he's not really a one or two track wonder, but <clears throat> the majority of his success comes from out in Ohio. Um, the team he's racing for now, the 33W car is based out of Ohio. So uh, Cap grew up racing in Ohio and spent time with lane racing out of Ohio as well. So I'm just going to put him in that category just as kind of like an Ohio type uh, track um, ringer out there. Um, when he's visited other tracks in the past, his success has been up and down. Uh, just haven't really seen a lot of consistent top fives, top tens from him um, outside of Ohio. So uh, that's why I'm sticking him in that category. Uh, next up, we got Tanner Carrick. Uh, I forget where I was going to – I think I think I'm going to put him in the meh category. Uh, from time to time, 
Kenrick does have some good finishes, shows some speed from time to time as well. Um, just kind of inconsistent. Uh, a lot of the times he'll get caught up in something. He'll spin out. Uh, I remember last year in his midget when he wrecked Jade Avdisian battling for the lead. Um, so Tanner Carrick has a lot of speed, but he's got to learn to keep his car straight and keep his nose out of, uh, incidents if he wants to improve. Uh, next up, we got Dylan Sisney. I'm going to put him in the one and two track wonders category. Uh, seems like the majority of Sisney's success has always come at either Williams Grove or Port Royal, um, outside of a few decent runs at Lincoln and Babs, but, uh, Link, or, uh, Port Royal and Williams Grove are generally Sisney's go-to tracks where he performs the best at. Um, next up, we got Cole Macedo. Uh, I'm going to put him probably in the few top tens category. Uh, Macedo does show very good speed from time to time, uh, but he also is kind of radical on the track at times. Uh, seems like he's always getting into an incident. Um, after he's shown like good speed throughout qualifying and like hot laps, that type of thing. But when it comes to like the heat race dash feature, seems like he's always getting into an incident, um, just like he did this past weekend at uh, the Dennis Roth Classic. He went on to win that race, but he backed it in the fence and got tangled with a lap car, but uh, he was able to keep it going and win. So it uh, seems like he's always into some sort of incident. So that's why I'm going to put him in that category because I just don't know if he can con maintain consistency throughout the entirety of a season. Uh, next up, we got Corey Day here. Uh, definitely going in the bright future category. Had a few podium finishes with the World of Outlaws last year. Uh, already has, I think, one or two NARC wins this year. Uh, it's been fast to start out the year. Uh, lots, lots of uh, good finishes over the past couple of years for Corey Day, and he's only like 16 years old, so he's got uh, he's got some some time some time to develop yet. So look for big things for Corey Day in the future. Uh, next up, we got Dom Selzy, who ironically enough got taken out by Corey Day this past weekend. Um, but Dom, I'm going to put in the few top tens category. Uh, seems like every time the Outlaws go west, Dom puts up a fight and can hold his own. Um, outside of that, though, Dom doesn't really travel much and uh, compete at like the national level. Um but like I said, when it comes to the West Coast, anywhere on the West Coast, Dom can perform at the caliber that any national touring series that comes in can. So uh, that's why I'm sticking him there. Uh, next up, we got Shane Golubic, another guy similar to Dom. Um, pretty much it, it, pretty much co copy and paste what I said for Dom to Shane Golubic, and it's pretty much a mirror image. Uh, next up, we got Riley Goodnow. Haven't really seen him much <clears throat> this year. I know he's going to be doing a little bit more 410 racing this year. Uh, outside of a couple tracks that he's been good at, he's just kind of meh. Um, he's young yet, so he has some time to develop. But uh, overall, I'm just going to stick him in the meh category for now. Um, Blake Hahn is next. I'm going to put him in the bright future category, uh, coming off his best career finish with the world of outlaws, uh, going 23rd to six this past weekend at Peevely. Um, Blake Hahn, three time ASCS champion, uh, going to be doing a little bit more 410 racing this year. So I only expect him to get better and better, um, as the season progresses. Uh, next we got Justin Henderson. Don't really know too much about him. Uh, I, I've heard his name once in a while but overall I still haven't really heard too much of him so that's why I'm putting him in the meh category uh next up we got JJ Hickel uh going to the 97 car he's going to be another one in the meh category that 97 car hasn't had the best runs these past couple years and then JJ Hickel it seemed like last year he would make a bunch of mains but every time he would make an A main he would end up on his lid or on his side or spun out or something so uh, that's why I am putting J.J. Hickel in that category. Uh, next up, we got Tanner Holmes. Uh, I'm going to put him in the bright future category. Evidently, you guys know Tanner. Uh, Tanner, if you're watching this, feel free to send me some subscribers <laughs> so I can grow this channel a little bit. 
but uh, putting him in the bright future category, uh, Tanner's still young. I think he's only like 18, 19 years old, only been behind the wheel of a 410 for, I think, two to three years now. Uh, this, this solid finishes are there. Tanner's just got to work on hitting his marks throughout the whole entire night, I think, a little bit more. Uh, seems like the nights that he does good in qualifying, something will happen in the feature. Or if he does terrible in qualifying, he's able to make his way up in the feature, um, similar to his latest video that just came out, um, where he struggled in qualifying with a steering box issue and uh, started tail. He made his way back up to like 13th and then uh, ended up hitting a tractor tire in the infield, uh, ending his night. So if he can maintain his consistency a little bit better, I think uh, Tanner has a bright future ahead of him as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next up, we got Hunter Schoenberg here on the list. Uh, I'm going to put him in the good drivers category. He's uh, had a lot of speed to start out the season. Um, and I think another year on the full all-star tour um, without Justin Peck, um, as you guys all know, the all-star tour is a little bit weaker in terms of talent this year. So I think uh, Hunter's going to have a lot of good finishes this season. And uh, like I said, he's had a decent amount of speed to start the season as well when he has ran with the Outlaws um, and when he ran, I think he ran the East Bay. Um, I know that was all-stars as well, but uh, anywhere he's ran this year, Hunter's been in the hunt. So <laughs> funny um <laughs> moving on uh this one kyle larson gee i wonder where i'm gonna put him uh best of the best obviously hasn't raised hasn't ran the sprint car that much over the past uh two years um but this year i've heard rumblings that he's going to be running it a little bit more and obviously larson is going to go into that category you can't fit him anywhere else uh next up we got austin mccarl um, I'm going to go in a few top tens category with McCarl as well. Uh, has some de has, has had some decent speed to start the season. Um, the high limit show at Lakeside, I think he was running uh, runner up in that until uh, something happened with it to his car with like one or two to go. Um, but Austin started on the pole of the Knoxville Nationals last year, uh, predominantly a monster or uh, predominantly a monster at not the Knoxville Speedway every single week. Um, but Austin, he's made his rounds, made a few trips to Florida so far this season, and made uh, some appearances in Texas, uh, Talladega short track he ran. He's been all right. He's, he's shown solid speed at times. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he sneaks in a few top tens um, with the National Series um, at, at certain points this season. Uh, next up, Connor Morrell. Don't really know much about him. Just going to stick him in the May category because first night with the All-Stars this past week, uh, had to use a provisional to make the show. And then the following night, uh, won his heat race. So that was kind of a bright spot for him. But if you looked at the heat race lineups for Saturday night's feature at Attica, uh, pretty much all the heavy hitters were in heat two. And I believe Connor was in heat one or three. I can't remember which one, but he was not with most of the heavy hitters. So for that reason, I'm going to put him in the meh category. Uh, next up, up, next up, we have DJ Neto. Um, I would put DJ Neto probably in the this section. Uh, not really a one or two track wonder, just kind of like a West Coast guy. Um, he's kind of like a poor man's Dominic Selzy, I would say. <laughs> not saying he's legit poor, but um, similar to Selzy in terms of performance at the West Coast tracks. Uh, just a little bit lower of an average finish, but uh, I really like DJ Neto. He's become one of my favorite drivers ever since uh, he got taken out last year. I forget what track it was at. He got wrecked by somebody, and then instead of going up and fighting the guy, he ended up, like, ripping, I think it was their spark plug wires out or something like that, and then that other car had to go to the work area, and they weren't able to get it fixed, so uh, that ruined their night as well. So <laughs> I became a big fan of DJ Neto after that, so that was uh, – one of my highlights of, that I will always remember of DJ Neto. Um, next up, we got Parker Price Miller. Uh, I'm going to put PPM in the few top tens category. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put him in the good drivers category. Uh, seems like PPM has bounced around through uh, to quite a different 
quite a few different teams this past uh, couple years, uh, raced his own number nine car, uh, raced with Sam and Mike McGee uh, last year. Um, PPM coming into a new team this year. New team on paper, I guess you could say, but is keeping his crew chief and some of his other crew guys as well. Uh, it's been decent start out the year. Definitely has taken a step in that 29 car. Uh, Cause I remember watching that 29 car in person last year and it did not fare too well. So I think PPM has elevated that car um, to the level where it's at today. And then uh, I, I guarantee PPM will be in the top five for the all-stars this season. So uh, good to see out of uh, PPM. Next up, we got Chase Randall. Uh, I'm going to put him in the bright future category. Uh, seems like Randall has been pretty fast um, throughout his young career, um, racing 360s at Knoxville again this upcoming season, um, as he did last year. Uh, showed a lot of speed down in uh, Australia this off season. Uh, I think he'll be good, just has to develop a little bit more yet. Um, and that'll come once he steps to the 410 um, level a little bit more. Uh, he is running the full high limit series this year, but uh, outside of that, maybe only a handful to 10 other probably 410 shows on the docket for Chase Randall. So once he gets a little bit more experienced, I think he'll be well off. Uh, next up, we got Aaron Reitzel. I'm going to put him in the meh category. Seems like he's just fell off a cliff since the days of the Bauman Reitzel Motorsports team. Um, wasn't really the same in that 83 car. Did have four wins that season, but uh, after he got caught cheating, it's just not been the same for Reitzel. So that is my reason for putting him in the meh category. Uh, same with Zest Sabo. Haven't really heard of him too much. Um, outside the state of Ohio, looking forward to seeing how he does this year with the All-Stars, going full-time with them this season. Next up, we got Justin Sanders. I'm going to put him actually in the good drivers category. Um, actually, I'm going to put him in the few top tens category. Uh, Justin Sanders has impressed me quite a bit um, with his runs in the 39 car. Um the ones that stick out to me the most are his two starts with the high limit series behind the wheel of the 39 uh, did really good last year in Indiana. And then this season um, at Lakeside, just a few weeks ago, uh, qualified really good, ran pretty good, made the feature. Um, I think if he just kind of ventured out a little bit from the West coast more often, I think uh, Justin Sanders, if he took a few more ride opportunities that he he's been uh, given, uh, I, I could see Justin Sanders developing into a really good driver here in the near future. Uh, next up, we got Tim Schaefer. Um, I'm going to put him. I'm going to put him in the solid drivers category. Uh, Tim obviously has gotten a little bit older, isn't as good as he once was, um, but they don't call him a Steel City Outlaw for a reason. Uh, Tim has tons of experience. Just doesn't really have the caliper of rides that he had in the past. Uh, it'd be cool to see him uh, full-time with the All-Stars again this season. I'm um, really excited to see what Tim can do behind the wheel of that uh, new car. But Tim has always been a solid driver, consistent, and uh, like I said, just a boatload of experience in his brain. So uh, putting him in the solid drivers category for that reason. Uh, next up, Ryan Smith. Uh, Ryan's got a little bit worse these past couple seasons. Uh, isn't racing 410s as much as he was. Uh, I know he did kind of the split deal with the six car and the 10X last year. Um, hasn't really had that many good results compared to what he has in the past. Um, back like when he ran the 94 car and the 72 car and uh, rides like that. But uh, Ryan still... Every now and again, he can surprise you, get a top 15 finish with the World of Outlaws or something like that. So uh, I'm just going to put him in the meh category because I know he stepped back to his uh, 410 race um, schedule a little bit this year. I've only seen him, I think he was at East Bay and maybe Port Royal once this year. Um, and I think he ran BAPS a few times. But other than that, I haven't really seen him race that much this year. I know he's helping out Reese Lentarski, who's coming up in the 360 ranks. 
So that for that reason of him stepping back a little bit, I'm going to put Ryan in the May category. Uh, love Ryan, super nice guy. Just uh, don't think he performs at the level that he once was. Uh, next up, we got Cy Lynch. I'm going to put Cy Lynch. Uh, I'm going to put him in the solid drivers category, I think. Uh, Cy, I, I kind of could see him up in the few top tens. Um, I know he has ran pretty good with the outlaws in the past, uh, sat on the pole last year. I think it was at Eldora, uh, finished ninth at a uh, Port Royal race last year, actually with the outlaws. Uh, I was at that race and was kind of shocked that Cy finished that good considering he had the outlaws and the posse, uh, there at Port Royal. Cy has shown flashes of speed, just got to kind of if he races more with the outlaws, I think he'll develop into a more consistent driver. Just uh, he's shown spurts of where he can go pretty quick. Just got to maintain it throughout a whole entire season. Uh, next up, we got Scotty Fields sticking him in the meh category. He was all right last year in his own car, uh, but now he's in the Pete Grove 70, which has struggled quite a bit in the past few seasons. Uh, Sammy Swindell couldn't do much in that car. Spencer Baston was up and down in that car. Justin Peck, when he was starting out, wasn't the greatest in that ride. So uh, I think Thiel will um, be all right. I mean, he's always been an okay driver. Just I think that card that he's in now kind of lacks some speed. Uh, same with Greg Wilson. He's a little bit older now, doesn't have the speed he once was. Uh, I think he'll be a little bit better this year back in the 20W compared to the 97 car. But overall, I can't see myself taking him out of the meh category for the time being. Uh, next up, we got Zeb Wise. I'm going to put him in the good drivers category. Uh, he's shown a lot of uh, speed so far this season. Has back-to-back -back runner up finishes so far with the All-Star Champions. Oh, yeah, All-Star Champions. All-Star Circuit of Champions. Um, in both of their Attica races to open the season. Uh, I think S Seb and the Rue Dean team have developed a little bit more chemistry this year, and that's going to allow them to have a little bit more success throughout this season. Uh, Justin Peck, I am going to put Justin Peck, I'm going to put him in the great drivers category. Uh, I've gotten to know Justin quite a bit over the past um, year. I uh, had my GoPro on his car. That video is actually here on my channel um, at Utica Rome last year when he won. And then he went on to win, uh, I think it was three out of the next four races after that as well. So I always joke with <laughs> Justin now, every time I see him, see him at a race, I'm be like, I got your lucky GoPro if you want to slap it on. Uh, but anyways, Justin's developed into a pretty damn good driver. Just, just last year, he kind of broke out for the first time. Uh, I became a really big fan of him. Uh, super, super, super nice guy. Really down to earth. We'll talk to anybody in the pits. Um, just a super chill guy. And the strides that he's made in the last year have been outstanding. So uh, I'm going to put him in the great driver's category. Seems like he always drives the piss out of his equipment. He He's either going to win or he's going to break something trying to win. So uh, you need guys like that to uh, drive for teams so that the teams can maximize um, their finishes throughout an entire season. Uh, next up, we got Carson Macedo. There's kind of a reason he's leading the outlaw points right now, so I'm just going to stick him in that uh, category. What can you say about Macedo? Had the most wins last year. Looks like he's on another tear this year. Has the longest top 10 streak going in the world of outlaws right now. So uh, don't really need to explain much on that one. Uh, Brian Brown, I'm going to put him in the good good drivers category. Uh, seems like Brownie can compete with the best of them at any track, really. Uh, when he comes and does his Pennsylvania swing um, to end out the year, uh, he can. he's always up there in qualifying. I think he had the track record at, I can't remember if it was Lincoln or Port Royal for a little bit. Um, I just remember hearing his name when I was down there one time last year. But it uh, seems like he can compete anytime he's with the World of Outlaws and uh, just a solid driver overall. Uh, obviously, he's had a few outlaw wins these past couple seasons. Um, just kind of a guy that uh, is pretty consistent, uh, has a lot of years out on the road, uh, got his 
reunited this offseason with his former crew chief. So I think that team will be solid once again this year. Uh, next up, we got Bill Rose. I think that's about the only place you can put him. I love Bill Rose. Appreciate what he's done for the sport. Uh, I, I admire his determination for staying on the road with the greatest show on dirt. Uh, just doesn't really have the speed of anybody on this list. Uh, but I love you, Bill. You're a legend. Keep going. Uh, so next up on the list here, we got Corey Eliason. I'm going to put him in the great drivers category. Uh, Corey's been a hell of a driver ever since he, uh, ever since the Rudine days, really. Uh, and after the split with the 26 car, um, went to the 71 car for Indy race parts and Bernie and has performed really good in that 71 car always maximizes the most of what he can get out of that car. And then let's not, that's not even to mention how good he did in Australia this off season. Um, this winter down under Corey was a, an absolute rocket ship down there. Um, really like Corey's driving style and grown to respect him a lot over the last uh, two seasons. Uh, Chris Windham, I'm going to put, uh, I kind of want to put him in the bright future category because this is only his second season with a 410 sprint car, but I think I'm going to put him in the good drivers category. Uh, I can see him comparable with guys like the other ones here in this category. Uh, just needs a little bit more experience. I think he'll be right around this level um, of competition. Uh, next up, we got Danny Dietrich. Uh, I'm going to put him in the great. Yeah, I'm going to put him in the great driver's category. Screw it. Uh, Dietrich's always been pretty fast, no matter where he goes. Um, always a threat to win, uh, predominantly in central Pennsylvania. It's most evident, but I have seen flashes of Dietrich uh, going out to Ohio and pulling off a win. Um, actually, my first ever all-star race I went to at Weed Sport, I think it was 2017 or 2018, uh, Dietrich went uh, from ninth that night to score the victory. So uh, Danny's always been a pretty solid driver, just kind of been unlucky so far, unlucky to start the season so far. Um this past weekend at BAPS, got caught up in two wrecks, had to go to the work area twice, and still drove back up to finish fourth. So uh, Danny's a great driver, and it's pretty evident for everyone to see that uh, nowadays, considering every time they go to Pennsylvania, they cheer for him now. And I think it was two years ago in 2021, every time they would say his name, he would get booed relentlessly. So I think uh, a lot of people are starting to take a liking to Danny, and uh, he's growing his fan base quite a bit over the past uh, year or so. Uh, next up, we got J-Mac. Uh, I'm going to put him in the great driver's category as well. Seems like he always has a ton of speed no matter where he goes. Uh, just got to develop a little bit more consistency if he wants to compete for a title. Uh, he's got two wins already this year, which is more than he had all of last year, uh, but also has wrecked quite a few uh, cars so far this year as well, which uh, is never a good thing. But I think if uh, J-Mac can just solidly stay in the top 5, 10 um, throughout their entire season, I think he has a shot to get a top five points finish. Um, just got to work on the consistency a little bit more, which I feel like I'm preaching to a lot of people on this list, but uh, it, it's one of the key aspects of sprint car racing. Uh, next up, we got Ryan Timms, obviously going to go in the bright future category, similar to Corey Day. Uh, Timms had a couple runner-up finishes with the World of Outlaws this past season. Um, Would have liked to seen a little bit more from him to start out the year so far. Uh, seems like that team struggled a little bit ever since their uh, 360 win at Volusia to open up the season. But uh, Tim's, like I said, 16, 17 years old. He's got tons of time to develop yet. And uh, I don't know, rumbling is that he's going to be running more of a midget this year than he is going to be a sprint car. So time will tell. But uh, he, nonetheless, he's got a bright future in the world of dirt, dirt track racing, regardless of whatever car he's buying the wheel of. Uh, next up, we got Dylan Norris, uh, pretty similar to all these other guys, really young, just graduated high school, I think, last year, the year before, uh, coming off his first win at Williams Grove this past season, uh, looking for Dylan to take even more so bigger steps this season. Uh, I know he's ran port a few times this year, which I don't even think he had ran port maybe once or twice before this year, but uh 
actually beat Lance DeWeese in a uh, heat race there a few weeks ago. So I was kind of impressed by that. So I think Dylan's going to be a good driver in the future. Uh, just needs to develop a little bit more in the present. Uh, next up, Noah Gass. Uh, I'm going to, I'm actually going to stick him in the bright future category as well. Um, Noah's young yet, has a lot to learn, uh, doing the best that he can with a little bit of an underfunded organization um, compared to the rest of the full-time outlaw tour. Um, I mean, not counting Bill Rose, but uh, Noah's had some flashes of speed. He's just got to, just got to kind of settle down at times, hit his marks. Uh, I noticed he can get kind of squirrely on the track at times, uh, just kind of like the other day in qualifying. He came, he was the first one out for qualifying, got a little bit high in turn four and smacked his right rear into the outside wall, uh, broke his car. So he didn't, I think his lap time was like 15 something. So it was one of the worst times. I think it was, I think it actually was the worst time of the night. So if he can clean up some of the slight mistakes he makes. And uh, honestly, if he could get a little bit more funding, a few more sponsors on that car, I think um, they can take steps to get that team going in the right direction. Uh, next up, we got Freddie Raymer, one or two track wonders category. Uh, he can do all right at Bridgeport. He can do all right at Port Royal when he chooses to run those tracks. He can be all right at BAPS when he chooses to run there, but obviously, the majority of Freddie's success has come at either Williams Grove or Lincoln. So that for that reason alone, I am putting uh, him in the one, two track wonders category. Uh, Brad sweet. We are going to go with Brad sweet. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory four time defending champ always has fat, fast speed, no matter where he goes. That one's pretty easy. Uh, Devin Borden. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put Devin Borden up here in the few top tens category. Uh, obviously, he has a bright future. He's really young yet. Second year behind the wheel of the 23 car. Showed a lot of speed so far this season. I think he's got like two or three wins already. And um, his career best outlaw finish of third, um, which he got at Lincoln earlier this year. Uh, been really impressed of what I've seen from Devin so far this season. And hopefully he keeps it up. Uh, next up, we got Justin Whittle. Uh, Going to go in the meh category. Whittle uh, has a lot of speed from time to time. Actually, I'm going to go bright future for Justin Whittle. Um, has a lot of speed from time to time. Just kind of the same thing as gas. Uh, kind of gets squirrely. Um, he wrecks quite a bit um, at Port Royal. Uh, I know last fall when the World of Outlaws were there, he went flipping into turn three. I think he tangled with Borden that night. I can't remember whose fault it was or what even happened. But I just remember Justin barrel rolling. Um, and then earlier on this year, too, when he was leading, coming out of turn four, kind of did what Noah Gass did, um, kind of smacked the wall with his right rear, and then his car went away, and he ended up uh, not being able to take home the win that, that night um, at Port earlier this year. So he's got a bright future, just got to um, keep his car – Got to learn to keep his car a little bit straight and to not get into incidences with other drivers, such as Jeff Halligan. <laughs> Ironic how those two are kind of together in this list. Uh, I'm going to put Jeff Halligan in the solid driver's category. Um, Jeff's always – he runs, obviously, out of central PA, and Jeff always seems to make the feature somehow, but he's not really predominantly good at any track. He's just solid. He can – make the show, get a top 15 to 20 finish. But uh, he, he generally makes pretty much every show he enters in uh, Central PA. So uh, that for that reason, I'm kind of putting him at the same level as Tim Schaefer, guys like that. Uh, next up, we got Troy Wagaman. Uh, I'm going to say Troy wagman has got a, I would say, a bright future. Um I noticed his speed's been a little bit down since he's made the move to the 39 team. I know that might take some time uh, getting adjusted to a new team, um, and that could be the cause of that. But uh, from what he's shown last year and the year before in that 19 car, especially at Lincoln, uh, just putting that car that comes on an open trailer every single week, uh, putting it on the outside pole starting against Kyle Larson at an all-star show at Lincoln, and just – the speed he's been able to show and 
the equipment that he's had has been uh, kind of eye-opening to me. So if uh, him and that 39 team can get things figured out, get that car uh, hooked up a little bit more, I think uh, Troy can uh, take some big strides this coming season. Uh, next up, we got TJ Stutz. I'm going to put him in a solid driver's category. Uh, he's pretty much a spitting image of Jeff Halligan to me. Uh, congratulations, TJ, for setting a new track record unofficial um, at Williams Grove the other night. Um, set it, I believe, during time trials, but it was group time trials. So um, congrats to TJ on that. But uh, always just been a solid driver, kind of like Halligan. Seems to make his way into any feature that he um, attempts to qualify for in Central PA against the best uh, drivers in the country. So uh, just always been a solid driver, TJ. So uh, next up, we got Buddy Kofoid. Uh, Going to put him in the contenders category. Obviously, he's not running a full-time series this year other than high limit. But, I mean, there's a reason he's still top five in points so far this season. Uh Buddy can drive the hell out of any car he gets behind. He's kind of like Ryan Timms in that uh, instance. But uh, I think if they so choose to run the outlaw schedule this year, I would not be surprised if uh, Buddy finishes top five with the outlaws. Uh, Showing a lot of speed this year. That car is on rails. Uh, next up, we got Sam Hafer cheap. Uh, I'm going to put Hafer T kind of in the same category as uh, I'm going to go a few top tens. Uh, Sam likes to pick and choose his races, kind of runs a true outlaw schedule. Uh, seems to be able to get a good run every now and again with the outlaws or the all-stars, wherever he's running. Um, set a track record at Bristol two years ago with the outlaws. Um, had some success at Eldora's. Uh, Sam, he just kind of bounces around a little bit, uh, runs some 360 shows every now and again, but uh, he always shows speed no matter what car he's running. So I wouldn't be surprised if he ticks off a few more top tens this coming season, uh, especially with the All-Stars, but uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he gets a few outlaw top tens as well. Uh, next up, up, next up, 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 I can't talk. Uh, we got Brock Searfoss. Uh, I'm going to put Zierfoss probably in the category. I'm just going to put him in a solid driver category. Uh, Brock did get a win this past season with the Outlaws, uh, marking uh, almost on like the two-year anniversary, I think it was, of his first one. Um, don't quote me on that. I didn't really pay attention hardcore until last year. But uh, Brock has shown a little bit more speed this year. Uh, just got to get his qualifying and time trial program a little bit better. Uh, but has went forward in every single feature that he uh, has appeared in this season. So they got the speed figured out for the feature portion. Just got to learn to start the night a little bit better so they don't put themselves behind. Uh, next up, we got Anthony Macri. Um, I'm going to put Macri... I'm going to put him in the great driver's category. Uh, seems like he wins a lot, as you guys might be able to tell that from this past season, but he also seems to wreck a lot. Um, just the incident with Donnie Schatz at Volusia uh, got into, I think, somebody else at Lincoln, actually, the day this photo was taken, because I got another picture of his uh, front wing folded over backwards. Um, I know he got upside down at Bridgeport um, this past October while I was there and just seems, I don't know, it's just something that Macri, it seems like he's either winning or being flipped over, spun out or something and, and then having to go from 20th to finish like 7th. <laughs> so uh, he's obviously a great driver, just needs to uh, learn to conserve his equipment a little bit more. Uh, next up on the list here, we have Donnie Schatz. Uh, I'm going to put him in the great driver's category as well. Um, Donnie, I would put him there, but the 15 is just kind of lacked speed a little bit the past couple seasons. Um, it's still Donnie Schatz though. So on any given night, he can choose to ignite that fire that he still has in him and uh, pull off something like he did in the Knoxville Nationals last year. Um, 
So that 15 is still going to be in the hunt. Uh, I just don't think he's a solidified top five driver anymore in the outlaws. So uh, for that reason, I'm sticking him in the great drivers category. Uh, next up, we got Casey Kane. Uh, I'm going to put him in the solid drivers category. It feels like Kane has always been a solid driver, can get a few top tens every now and again. Uh, is a little bit older now. Don't know with his injury history how much longer he's going to race for. But uh, I'm still rooting for Kane to get his first win. I think that would be absolutely bonkers. And I can't wait to see that finally happen if it does. Um, but, yeah, there's a reason I'm sticking him in that category. Just he hasn't really had the success. I mean, especially with his car being on par with Brad Sweet. Um, so for that reason, I'm sticking Casey in the solid category. Uh, next up, uh, next up on the list, we have Geo Selzy. Uh, I'm gonna stick Geo. Uh, obviously, I could put him in the bright futures category, but I think I'm gonna put him in the good drivers category. Um, I could flirt between these two as well, kind of. Um, Geo obviously is young yet, has a lot of time to develop. Uh, similar to Dom, has a uh, racing background growing up with their dad racing dragsters uh, growing up. And uh, he's really talented at the California West Coast tracks, but Gio also, he, he got his first win at Williams Grove on the National Open prelim night at, I think it was, what, 16 years old. Uh, that's just absolutely crazy to defeat the Outlaws and the Posse at 16 years old at Williams Grove. That's just almost unheard of in today's world. So uh, obviously Gio has the talent and uh, skill to get it done. Um, and I expect Gio to develop quite a bit this year, running full-time with the Outlaws for the first time in his career. Uh, kept the same entire team, almost kept the same entire rap um, on his car, but uh, look for that 18 team to be up front throughout the rest of the season. Uh, coming up, especially after coming off that big win at Lakeside with uh, the 50 grand that uh, Gio said, I guess he was going to go gamble in the casino. So um, <laughs> props to Gio. Can't wait to see him throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Rico. Rico has actually surprised me quite a bit this year. I'm going to put him up in the contenders tabs for so far this year. Uh, obviously hasn't ran as many of the big shows um, as some of the other guys, but Rico has had speed in almost every single race. He won the Jason Johnson Classic. He won at Lincoln earlier this year against the Posse and Outlaws. And then in the high limit show at Lakeside was leading um, late in that race and fell victim to a flat tire. But otherwise he probably would have won that race as well. Uh, so Rico has got that uh, 24 car firing on all cylinders this year. And I think he's going to be a threat no matter what racetrack he shows up to throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Sheldon, Sheldon Hottenshield. We are going to put him in, I'm going to put him in the good drivers category. Um, I could put him in either of these. I think I'm going to put him in the, eh, I think I'm actually going to put him in the great driver's category. The thing with Sheldon that makes me kind of want to put him in the good driver's category is he just kind of similar to Macri. He just doesn't take care of his equipment. Um, sure, he can be as fast as anybody on any given night. Just it's a matter. There's been so many instances over the years of Sheldon leading late in races and just something either he bikes it in turn one rolls it over I uh, remember that night at weed sport a few years ago uh, he was leading with two to go in that race gets into the back of a lap car I think it was James McFadden that night if I remember correctly and then backs it into the wall in turn one um, just silly stuff like that so I think if Sheldon can clean those mistakes up a bit I think he'll be a really great driver and It'll help his consistency level, which in turn will help his uh, points finish in the standings. Uh, next up, we got Kyle Reinhardt. Um, kind of want to put him, I'm going to put him in the few top tens category. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, actually, I'm going to put him in a solid driver's category. Uh, Reinhardt's always been pretty solid. Uh, staying a little bit closer to home this year, not running the full all-star tour this season, but uh, Reinhardt's always been a pretty reliable driver, just 
uh, not at the caliber as some of these other guys up in these categories, but uh, nonetheless, Reinhardt's been a solid driver, and I wouldn't expect, I wouldn't be surprised if he was somehow able to rattle off a few top tens against like the World of Outlaws, All Stars this year, um, stuff like that. So uh, next up, we got Spencer Baston. Uh, I'm gonna put him probably in the. I'm gonna put him in the great drivers category. Baston has a lot of variety in his background um, from his days into a midget to now going 410 racing. Uh, that five cars looked pretty quick and consistent all year this year, which is something they didn't really have last season. Um, sure, they had a few wins this past season during Spencer's rookie campaign with the Outlaws, but it seems like so far this year they've had an overall con more consistent season with less uh, finishes outside the top 15. Um, so I've really liked what I've seen from Baston so far this year, and I'm assuming he will keep it up throughout the rest of the season as well. Uh, next up, we have Robbie Price. I'm going to say he has a bright future. Price is still young yet, similar to pretty much all the guys I got in this category. Uh, just needs a little bit more time to develop. I know his confidence has went up a little bit, getting those few top 10 finishes last year uh, near the end of the season. And uh, seems like they've worked on that time trial package a little bit. Um, Jason Sides has gotten to um, gotten that thing a little bit quicker when it, in terms of qualifying heat race performances so far this season and actually been pleasantly surprised on how Robbie has been doing this year. So I think with a little bit more time behind the wheel um, in that same car this year can only lead to better things in the future for Robbie. Uh, next up is David Gravel. Obviously we are going to throw him in the best of best uh, runner up last year. I think currently runner up now or third, I forget because him and Sweet have been swapping so much. But uh, Gravel is always going to be in the hunt down to the wire. So uh, sticking him in that category. Uh, Shuhart, I am going to put Shuhart uh, not in the good driver category. I'm pushing buttons here. Uh, I'm going to put him in, I think I'm going to put Shuhart in the great driver's category. Just seems like Shuhart, he has speed one week, and then the next weekend he'll finish it like 15th, 16th, and then the following night he'll finish 5th again, and the next night he'll finish like 12th. So it just kind of depends on the track for Shuhart. He's been hit or miss so far this season. Um, would like to see a little bit more speed from him because I know he's certainly capable of being in this category or maybe even this category um, on any given night but has just lacked consistency so far this season. So I'm going to put him in that category. Uh, next up, we got Brent Marks. Um, Brent Marks is going to go, I don't know why this page is screwing up, but obviously he's going to be in the contenders category. Uh, there's a reason he won the most money last year out of any team. Uh, continues to run a full-time outlaw schedule. Full-time true outlaw schedule, that is. Um Always a threat no matter where he goes. I mean, we've seen what he could do the other night just at Attica alone, starting 20th and driving to the win uh, against a solid field out there in Ohio. So uh, Brett Marks always going to be a contender and always going to have his name in the mix no matter where he uh, shows up to. Uh, next up, we got Jacob Allen. I'm going to put Jacob Allen probably in the good driver's category. Uh, Jacob Allen has lacked consistency a little bit this year, uh, got quite a few finishes outside the top 10 so far this year, which is a little bit concerning um, coming off of a breakout season last year. Uh, so maybe that one A team will get those uh, kinks straightened out and Jacob can be back up front here um, throughout the remainder of the season, but it just hasn't looked that great so far for the Shark Racing 1A. Uh, next up, we got Ayrton Jenatin. Uh, I'm going to put him in the meh category. Uh, Jenatin has shown some flashes um, where he can make features consistently, that type of thing. But you very rarely see him finish inside like the top, uh, I'd say, 12 positions. So for that reason, I am going to place him in the meh category. Um, he's got a bright future. 
got top equipment, top everything. Uh, just need to see a little bit more for him from him going forward if he wants to move up this list. Uh, Tyler Courtney, we are going to put Tyler in. We'll put him in the great drivers category. I mean, it's only fitting if Justin Peck's there. <laughs> Watching those two go back and forth these last couple seasons has been pretty, pretty crazy to watch. Uh, been a really good show to watch as well. Uh, I feel like he's comparable with all these guys in this level. Um, former Kings Royal winner, going for three straight all-star championships. Uh, I, I would say he's comparable to Peck, Elias, and uh, J-Mac, Hawton Shield, those type of guys. Uh, Craig Kinzer, uh, part of me out of respect just wants me to go solid drivers, but Craig is just, he hasn't looked at all good this season. Um, obviously not running the all outlaw tour for the first time in forever. Um, and just every track he's shown up to this year, he seems like something's been wrong with his car or something goes wrong or just really lack consistency so far this season. And uh, I know there's been a couple races so far too. He was, he showed up, he was on the entry list and then never ended up running. So uh, hoping Craig can finish out his career on a high note, but it's not looking good for the 11 K um, in the future, uh, especially with Craig's age now. And then uh, just the performances throughout his whole entire career, he hasn't exactly lived up to the Kinzer name, but uh, always been a fan of Craig, liked him, didn't mind him. I'd like to see him finish out the year strong. All right, so last up here, we got Lance DeWeese. Uh, Going to put him in the one or two track wonders category. Uh, it's only fitting. Um, I would put him up here in the great good drivers category. Probably a great driver because he is one of the most legendary sprint car drivers. But if you look at his stats outside of Williams Grove and Port Royal, uh, it's nothing to write home about. So I'm going to uh, stick him in the one or two track wonders category. Seems like him and Raymer have a lot in common um, based on those finishes, except uh, DeWeese is good at Port Royal and Raymer's good at Lincoln, but they're both dominant at the Grove. So, um, but yeah, guys, that concludes this list. Uh, like I said before, if you guys have any disagreements, that type of thing, feel free to leave it. In the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Love to discuss sprint car racing with all of you guys. Um, let me know what your thoughts are of this style of video. Uh, like I said, I was trying something new here, trying to uh, build up this channel a little bit um, with the off season still kind of looming. Um, I know things are starting up this coming week and then the weekend after that, I'm pretty much going to be flat out until October. So I uh, figured I'd give this a try and see how, see how it goes. So uh, I appreciate you all for tuning into this video. Sorry. It was a little bit long. Uh, didn't really expect me to ramble on here for an hour, but uh, here we are. So <laughs> appreciate you guys uh, watching and tuning in and uh, hit that subscribe button for more uh, GoPro content this coming summer. Um, and hope to see you guys all at a racetrack soon.